great treat. And I hope that you're enjoying this so far. Um, I have to say that as I'm in the background and I'm turning over the keys so that our um, thought leaders and our leaders can share their wisdom with you today, um, I'm practicing, I'm sitting back there, I'm meditating, I'm making notes just like you are. So I just want to say that I'm making notes. Um, I hope that we will hold ourselves accountable. I'd love to hear how you are responding to to the great speakers that we have i'd love to hear about your takeaways your aha moments so tweet them out include us into uh at you women women's network and uh then i can retweet i can i can you know I'm, I'm checking messages in between today so um i'd love you to post some of your stuff on linkedin some of these great um takeaways that you have please share it and i'd love to see you continue to put some of those into action because the difference between actually um achieving your goals is actually taking action on them. So some great tips today. And it looks like we have our next guest in the green room. So I'm super excited to be welcoming you to uh, Success Summit. Armin A, if you are making your way over to the stage, I will introduce you. Armin A is the CEO of Health and Wellness Global. She is a 2019 Woman of Inspiration Cultural Ambassador a, U, a UWN global investor. She is known as the Arm, Arm a Global, and I know this because she's been on these wonderful talks that I've seen um, daily for several, several weeks now. Um, and she's the founder of Wealth and Wellness Global, a coaching company that encourages living abundantly. She's also the author of Joyous Wealth, and you speak, Arbine, uh, I don't know where you are, but it's hard to see where you are, but you speak about finance and abundance and fusing the two together so that you're making it not a scary thing. I know that when we talk about finances, we talk about, you know, numbers and money, people tend to be a little bit, you know, hi, how are you? I was just saying that when people talk about money, they get all tense. And you bridge the abundance and the joy and the finances together. And so your beautiful gift is that you're packaging it up to release the fear around finances. Yes. I mean, your extensive background in your, in your field of wealth management, um, you're actually retired, but then you've rebranded. You started a new company over again. Like many other uh, successful entrepreneurs, you just keep going. There is no end for you. Um, you're just really doing something that you love, that you're passionate about, that there's definitely a need for it. So I'm really excited to have you here with us today. Armin A., I'm just going to turn the stage over to you to share about overcoming the fear of finances. Well, hello, Monica, and thank you so much for having me here. I was watching the uh, summit yesterday, and I am so excited to be part of your network. Amazing, amazing speakers. Thank you so much. And so, as you said, I have been in financial industry for the longest time, and I did wealth management. But what happened, a lot of people were telling me details of their lives, and money was only one part so i decided to combine um, holistic approach life approach with money right now because of the pandemic of course um the the concern is uh, what are we going to do we we go into the the fear mode most likely but what i like to bring to your attention is take a look at two things number one is your net worth statement and number two is your cash flow now, I know that some of us here have massive resources, some of us have very limited financial resources, and some are in between. So you need to really look at exactly where you are in terms of your cash flow and in terms of your net worth. If you're trying just to survive, that's a very different ball game than somebody who's got a lot of income coming in and has a, a very nice net worth statement. A net worth statement is all of your assets minus all of your liabilities. And that is your net worth. That includes your boat, your yacht, your jewelry, your furnishings, your car, your assets, and so forth. The, the budget, on the other hand, it's important to look at your fixed expenses, <clears throat> excuse me, fixed expenses at this time. 
what is it that you absolutely have to have? Your rent, your mortgage, your food, your car insurance, and so forth. And it's very, very easy to get into a panic mode. But what I like to encourage you to do is say, how long can I survive? How much money do I have? You need to be in charge of your finances. If you do not have the information, look for people who do have the information. So being proactive is very, very, very important at this time. One thing I like to kind of go back and talk about biology just a tiny bit is that there are three parts of the brain. The first part is the uh, lizard brain, which is responsible for automatic functions of the body, like digesting food or... <laughs> I got a brain freeze for a moment. <laughs> okay, or breathing, yes, breathing. Um, number two is the limbic brain, uh, which is basically to protect us. Uh, it's the survival of us, the species. This limbic brain has um, memory and emotions and the third section which is the front, uh, for, uh, front cortex is the evolutionary brain or the thinking brain in the very very long past thousands of years ago we really used the limbic brain to survive but so what happens now is that when we are threatened because our security is threatened our money is threatened what happens we go back to that limbic system we start panicking we freeze the idea is to actually take a moment and use our thinking brain or evolutionary brain and say, okay, am I going to die, really? How much money do I have? Can I survive for a year if no money comes in? Let's say your expenses are 3,000 a month or 30,000 a month. Can you survive based on your assets? If you don't, that means the, I'm sorry to say that, but the pandemic, at, not too much of an effect because your finances were not taken care of properly, but that's okay. We can make mistakes and there's always time to go back and do what is right for us. So that is one thing. Now the second part, so network statements and your budget and see how long you can survive with, with your money. The second part that I like to bring to your attention is there's three things in feeling well. One is time management, one is energy management, and one is emotional management. If we manage our emotions, that's one thing. We talked about the fear, we talked about the limbic system and so forth. But the emotional management is one thing. The energy management is very, very crucial because if we are not in our best energetically it's very different uh, it's very difficult to focus it's very difficult to become creative so what i would encourage you to do is take care of yourself take that nice bubble bath go for a walk and by the way it has been proven that if we are by the water the limbic system that we are into the survival everything is okay everything is okay don't worry there's water there is there is uh, plenty of everything that we need to survive. So take those walks, have your energy back in your body and be very proactive. Monica, do you want me still to go on or you have some questions? <laughs> no, I, I, am, I would love you to share more. I, I have to say that what is so intriguing here is that what people don't realize is when they think about money, Okay, what you're opening up the door for is how we actually reframe our mind and how we have to be prepared to receive it. We have to be organized, we have to plan, but what I love that you're bringing to the table, Armine, is the fact that, you know, if we're stressed to begin with, right, if we're not in that space of, and as we heard from our earlier speakers, meditation, self-care, yes. you know, trying to bring awareness to actually being centered, then we can handle the finances. We can handle the obstacles. We can sit down and look at our, you know, you, you say time and emotions and energy. They are all connected, right? So if we balance that out, I just like you to expand a little bit more on that because people right now, I mean, they see bills come to the mailman coming to the door 
And if you're really trying to figure out your business and, you know, if you're, if you're operating a business right now and you've got so many payments going out the door, those little envelopes that come to the door, you know, <laughs> be great if they're filled with uh, cat checks all the time, but there's a lot of bills coming through as well. And as one of our experts said yesterday, be careful of the payments that we defer because those also come back. So all of those things and it playing in our head because we have that fear around the finances. How do we get past the fear? Give us some more tips on how you get past the fear and kind of just some actionable steps that they can take or sort of, um, how would I say, a routine. You know, is it one day a week that you focus? Okay, that day I'm going to set aside to prepare yourself mentally for it. Okay. So there are three things in a very successful business. One is profitability. Second is sustainability. And the third one is, uh, sorry, the second one is sustainability. And the third one is consistency or all of them together. That means you have to have a profitable business in a very consistent manner, regardless of the economy. But right now, as we know, the economy is changing. When the economy is changing, that is beyond us, and we were not prepared for this, being adaptive is the most important key. Now, I'm gonna give you an example. Many, many years ago, you remember uh, Blockbusters? When Netflix came in, Blockbusters had no interest in Netflix. At some point, they offered to work with Blockbusters for $50 million. And you know what Blockbusters did? They turned it down. Where are they now? Nowhere. Nowhere. So my point is that your business will go up and down. Now, it depends if, we are, if you're a business owner or if you're on salary. There, we have a very big range of uh, audiences here with financial resources, very limited resources, people who own their businesses, which is multi-million dollars or very small business and they're starting. The key is to know your numbers, what money is coming in and be very specific about spending. Don't just spend, don't expand just yet. However, if you have money and you are in a good position, there are a lot of available resources. You can buy businesses. You can, uh, you can uh, partner up with another business if that works for you. If you like to get into the stock market, you can buy more investments because they're low. Real estate is low. If you are a very uh, financially savvy person and you have the resources, it's an excellent time. However, if you have been on salary and really money is really, really tight right now, as you know, the government is, is um, helping with $2,000 a month emergency uh, money. Now, the point is, don't get to the, to the level where you say, you know what, my life is over. I don't have anything. This is hard. The kids, this, that. Just go one day at a time. Just one day at a time. Relax. Relaxation is the most important. And the brain doesn't know when you're thinking about the future or it's a matter that you are just dealing with now. Just say that I know what I'm doing and I'm in charge of it. The feeling of being in charge gives you the sense of empowerment. Once you feel empowered, then there is hope. Hope is one thing that I really, really um, like the word hope, which means you're positive and you think there is a future. If you don't think in those terms, it's going to be a chaos. It's very difficult. Um, I, I'm going to give you an example. I have been kind of, I have a very sensitive energy and I get drawn into people's uh, lives sometimes when they share. And um, there was about three days I wanted to meditate. And so last night I said, I have to meditate tonight. I have to. So I did. And um, it's, it's, it's words and vocals. And then I follow what they're saying. And said, when was the last time you, you actually spoke to your spirit? Do you know? I, I, am, I thought I was always in touch with my spirit. It was in February, early February. And I'm thinking, what? Three, four months. And then there was this feeling of joy that just came all over my body. So it's important to acknowledge that we are not just bodies. There is body, mind, and spirit. We are all connected. And then uh, the meditation went on to say, how would your spirit uh, talk or do? What would it do? And I could see my body shifting. And the message was to align myself. Mm -hmm. So we need to do all of this. I can't emphasize enough. Money, it's one part of the solution. 
or one part of the equation, but being in charge, being empowered is another. It's very crucial to sit down and look at your, what can you wait? What can you do now? Um, I'm actually doing a workshop on Saturday. This one is free. Uh, you can always join us and um, it's called Joyous Wealth. I will talk about the, um, how to do your finances in terms of net worth statement, cash flow, and a very holistic approach, how to be in connection with your divine self. You can check our website, wealthandwellnessglobal.com and uh, go through the workshop. It's free. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention, this is an excellent time to get your powers of attorneys and wheels in place. Just in case, just in case, you know, something uh, unexpected happens, at least you give power to someone who can look after your uh, finances or your medical inquiries. Amazing. I have got to say, again, you know, I, I have to step in there because you're like, it's hard to know what the audience is really seeing or feeling right now. Um, so I want to say you did an, an amazing job, Armine. I love how you're, you're fusing how we feel about money because it's really, really powerful. If we feel that we have none, none comes. If we feel that we have abundance and we're living from a state of abundance, the money comes. It makes it way easier to go through the day knowing that you, you don't have to worry. You're working hard, focus on working, focus on building your business, focusing on recovering from COVID and, and thinking about the possibility. So I really love that word alignment and, and being very spiritually aware. Um, and you and I both know that, you know, I'm very aligned with that. I also get messages and I act on them. I don't even question. So, um, you know, I, it's, I turn it, I turn the keys over and I call it a download and I, you know, I just, the universe has my back. That's all I'm going to say there. Um, power of attorney, really important, um, you know, for if you have kids or if you don't, any assets that you do have, you know, um, it's so important. I know I've been, that's on my list. I know I have not completed it done. I actually did a letter to myself and, and I have it in safekeeping. So it's not a formal document, but at least what I did um, over this time, actually just before COVID is I actually wrote down a letter so that here's a letter that if you need to, to get it for any reason. Um, I, it, it's not through the lawyers, but it's a letter. So um, that, and it's stamped, I mailed it to myself, it's not open. So um, even if you do the basics right now, um, and then the next step to get to to a lawyer and, and do the process with them. But thank you so much for sharing. Um, if you can send me all the information about your uh, workshop we'd be happy to put that with a wrap-up of the complete summit i have got to say it was a pleasure having you on board and i'm so proud to have you a part of our universal women's network and bringing your area of expertise um, to our team nationally and your leadership so thank, thank you so much thank you so much it was a pleasure enjoy your day thank, thank you, you.